Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to 360 of Opera Live. Today we're going to be interviewing uh, soprano Julie Fuchs. Um, I'll wait, I'll give her a couple of minutes to join us. Um, so we have, I have a, a bunch of questions planned for her, but we will be opening the floor at the end for a Q and A. So please, if you have questions along the way, just write them in. And then um, at the end, I'll leave some time and go through them. So, so Julie can also answer your questions. Hello, Argos. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope everyone's staying positive, everyone's staying busy. I've been posting a lot of recommendations. I'm Eugenia, by the way, I'm Eugenia Forteza. I'm the founder of 360 of Opera. Um, so I've been sharing a lot of hello from Odessa. I'm in New York City, by the way. I love that we're all connecting from all over the world. Um, so yeah, check out all the recommendations I've been offering and also lots of free trials and trying to get free things for you guys so you can stay busy and and connected and learning um there's a lot to do out there right now hi olivia hello uh, mexico hola by the way i'm french argentinian so you can write in in most languages, I will understand. I don't know Russian, um, but I have a friend. She's a dancer. Nice. All right. Hello, Camille. I love seeing so many familiar faces. Sam from Brazil. <laughs> Sama. <laughs> um, all right. So. For the people who are joining in right now, I'm just giving Judy a couple minutes. Please write in questions if you have questions as, um, as the interview goes, because I'll definitely leave some time for your questions as well, because we want this to be interactive and interesting for everyone. Uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. It's awesome to see people tuning in from all over the world. I see Julie. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay. Hello. Ah, hello. <laughs> Coucou, ça va? Ça va? Well, hello, welcome hello, to 360 hello, of Opera, Julie Fuchs. We're so happy to have you. Uh, where are you tuning in from? I'm home, which means in France. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm in, uh, in the middle of nowhere between Avignon and Nîmes, which are okay. two little cities in the south of France, in Provence. Okay, okay, that's... That I'm, I'm sure the food is really good, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything is good here. The everything, food, the, uh, yeah. life, the weather, <laughs> the people. <laughs> so, but, and you're, you're in New York City, right? I'm in New York. I'm in New York. You know, we're, we're okay. <laughs> How is it for you now? Sorry? How is it for you now? I'm, I have to say, I'm good. I live in Uptown Manhattan and... We're right by the river, so overall, okay. it's good so far. I can't complain. We're yeah. healthy so far, so. Um, okay, so let's get started. I'm yeah. gonna leave, I ask people to write in their questions as we go, and then towards the okay. end, I'll leave some time uh, yeah. so we can get to those too. So our first question is, you have some, I wanna start on a positive note. Uh, yeah, always. You have, you have to on a positive note too. Right, right. <laughs> so you have exciting debuts coming up next season. Could you share with us what they are, why they're special to you, and are you working on them any differently now that you might have a bit more time on your hands? 
thank you for the question, which is quite interesting because uh, th there is so much to say about this period and the, the, the way I see the future now. <laughs> so we don't know when we will go back to the theaters. Um, my, my two next productions, I don't really know about that. So I will talk about the next season because mm -hmm. I hope yeah. that next season will still... By September, happen. we hope that exactly. things will be okay. Exactly. So in, uh, during the next season, I will have four role debuts. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will start with Adina in uh, Le Visite d'Amour. Uh, then uh, I'll ha I have Aspasia from Mitridate, Mozart. Mm -hmm. uh, Pamina, which will be my first Pamina, finally. <laughs> I think that, you know, <laughs> I, I had to decline the nose and the only time I could sing it, I was, well, there was, it wasn't possible. So finally, I'm super happy to sing Pamina. Nice. Uh, and then, uh, so that's my third, oh yeah. I'll make my debut in Wagner. Oh, <laughs> that's the that's the funny surprise. Uh, I will I will I will sing uh, Waldvogel in Siegfried. It's a new production of The Ring in Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be conducted by uh, Philippe Jordan, staged by Calixto Bieto. So when oh, they yes. offered me this, I thought, well, I mean that's the the only opportunity wh where I could I could enjoy <laughs> being in this new universe <laughs> yeah <laughs> discover this music i really lo love but i am you know i don't i'm not obviously a <laughs> Wagnerian singer so and because i will be singing at the same time adina in paris opera too so i can do both in the same time so i thought okay let's do it it's exciting let's do it <laughs> awesome. and and i have to say that because of this quarantine um do you say, how do you say quarantine? Quarantine. Ah, quarantine, oh, sorry. Quarantine. Um, I work really differently. Um, and that's really enjoyable. I mean, I, I love that. It's a new feeling. Maybe other singers feel the same, I, I, can, I can imagine. Um, because first, we don't know when we will rehearse and be on stage again. But it's pretty sure that it's not before two, three months. So we, I don't feel the, um, the rush. I don't feel like I need to rush. And for example, normally I have like four, five new roles every, every season. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, um, and every time I work like, okay, at the end of the week, I need to know this scene, this scene. Okay, let's work on it. And it's, it's nice, but now I just, I can enjoy singing just for for the sound, for mm. for the sound of the voice to explore things, and and then I can sing on my roles, but without feeling myself in a hurry. So that's really really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it but, also, I feel like it probably sticks in your brain and body a little differently with more time too. No. Exactly. Uh, we will see at the end. <laughs> Maybe I <will> get back <laughs> I have to try it. <laughs> Maybe before the next rules come, I will forget about them. Uh, but uh, now it's really nice to not have to, to not have stress. To not yeah. be stressed. Yeah. And um, the thing is, I I have to work on myself, obviously, and that's I'm not good at that because I'm. I mean, I need people to, you know, to, to share, to discuss, to... Totally. I mean, singers were social creatures in a way. Of course, we have to do a lot of work by ourselves, but then there's, it comes to a point where we need to do it with others. So yeah. that's where the challenge is, of course. Yeah. yeah so yeah. That, that takes me to my next question. Um, can you tell us a bit more about your slow living endeavors? Because you, you post a lot about this idea of slow living before the quarantine yeah. started. <laughs> That's <the easiest laughs> so, thing I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, and how, how that applies to a traditionally hectic opera life. So how is your slow living um, before quarantine and now maybe during quarantine? 
Well, yeah. Um, now it's, it has been a few years that I'm exploring this way of living, um, which actually I find more, when I try to put words on it, I, I mean, slow living is the most common expression to, to talk about that. But I would say um, like to live in a natural speed more because sometimes you want to be slow, but sometimes you need to be fast and you, and you like that. So it's totally okay to be like that. Mm -hmm. and, and the point for me is just to feel like I'm in a natural speed and to take time when I need to. And it's easy to forget when you need to take time <laughs> with yeah. our jobs because yeah. you always... First, you always want to to sing because it's what you like. <laughs> right. But also, every everything is going so fast now. We can travel in few hours. You can just travel the world, and that's a different thing we have to cope with <laughs> now. Like, if you want to 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 agree on two con two concerts um, a day after a day, you can. Yeah, because you can just take a flight and it's okay. But then, <laughs> yeah, right. So, so yeah, now I'm 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 trying to leave uh, um, listening to myself. That's that's all, and and to put some uh, boundaries. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. uh, if it's too much, it's too much. I mean, I'm sorry, but I won't. I won't be able to. To agree on that offer because it's 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 too much um yeah. i could do it but now i want to do um to be more uh entire when i do something you know it's, yes yes 100 percent. well yeah. it's a, a little bit so also this idea of getting to know yourself yeah and what you need to be able to do your job to the fullest right yeah and actually, you could think that when you think about slow living, it's to do less. But I really feel like I'm do much more. I'm doing much more now, because, for example, for the first time this season, I I had to to cancel one production. It was a tough decision, but I thought, okay, now I'm a new mom, and I need to 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 take time for for me, for my son, but also for my next roles. It's 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 a old thing, and I don't want to. So I did one role less. But then mm -hmm. the four other roles, I was so hundred percent. Yeah, and and I felt like I w I worked more, and it was really um, a good sensation. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. To be able to be more present and focused in everything you're doing is that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it's good to learn how to say no, <laughs> to yeah. take care of and, yourself. And also, I mean, it's really rewarding because the audience, I feel that the audience feel everything. And when you are really here uh, for them and for the music and you want to serve the music, they, they feel it and, and it's really rewarding. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so next- but as, well, I'm Sorry, but and, and no, I no, say no, that, please. but still, I, I speak a lot, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Um, I say that and and yet I'm I'm still working a bit too much I would say so it's really a process I'm not like going I don't want to work it's just I was it, it has been 10 years that I'm doing this job and now I mm -hmm. feel like okay I, I just want to do this job better that's not that yeah. I want to like uh, less I just want to do better yeah well and i think especially in europe because of the proximity yeah. Yeah. of the cities and you know that it's so easy to just get on a flight get on a train um there is definitely this tendency of like you know concert concert different city yeah. each day and even if it's but even if it's a short flight it's still travel it's still going up going down so yeah yeah and yeah. it's still a, 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 a role or a concept to learn. And that's, that's important. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's something I notice a lot. Um, yeah. That, you know, singers with big careers, uh, mm, we see a lot of like, wow, they're doing this, this, this. And yeah. what I'm thinking all the time is like, okay, when yeah. are they learning all this? <laughs> <laughs> when are you learning all this music that you're performing? Yeah. 
Um, so maybe, I mean, if you can talk a little bit about that, how, how do you structure when in a more normal rhythm, <laughs> right? When there's less time, how do you structure a little bit? How far ahead um, do you start learning these roles and this rep? I'm not an example, really. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't give any advice about it because I'm a fast learner. Mm -hmm. which is not a good thing because your brain can learn fast, but your body needs, needs time anyway. So uh, I also, I had the chance to do like a repertoire really like almost all the time, a bit too easy for me. I mean, I, you know, I've done a lot of Baroque stuff of Mozart roles. Um, and, and yes, I had some challenging roles like La Fille du Régiment, like Junia in Lucio Silla, like uh -huh. uh, Contessa Adele. Those roles, yeah, I, 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 I worked on them a lot and in advance. But I mean, to learn some roles like, um, I don't know, Morgana in Alcina or, uh, or even Susanna, which is long, but easy in my voice. It's, it was it was easy to learn to learn that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I also played the violin for fifteen years, so I'm quite uh, like many of of the singers now, but uh, most of the singers now. Um, it's it's easy to just take a take a score and and learn it and learn it fast. Yeah, but I always start with a with a text with a translation because I feel like when I really know what I'm singing and what the other characters are singing I run f faster so mm -hmm. uh, and then I listen I, I listen some versions of course uh, and I I really em embody the um, the role when I work with my vocal coach on it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great so what has quarantine been like for you so far are you working on any special product projects or activities you don't normally do? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> uh, um, what was the beginning of the question? <laughs> so, what what has quarantine been like so far for you? Okay. Um, well, actually, it was the um, logical um, following of my previous um, period of slow living because I choose two months in the season to to rest I mean to not to rest to <laughs> to breathe <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'm already super relaxed and at the beginning of the quarantine I was super relaxed and, and ready to go on stage I was like okay I can I can go now <laughs> no okay <laughs> so um now I have more time to learn my next roles uh, and I'm super happy because those are going to be roles like I really want to add to my repertoire for years mm -hmm. so I really want to make them mine you know like I want to feel like I, I they are my friends <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so I work more on, on them and I work as I told you a bit before I work without being stressed by um, the time i i really enjoy working on the sound of my voice and for example in one day now i have the time to work on the different levels like i start my day with some yoga so mm -hmm. i can start then working with the body prepared and then i can do a bit of uh, translation and to work a bit on the on the score on the voice and then also on the music on on choices I could do and and it makes this more interesting because I can in one day I can travel <laughs> into the, um, the the full preparation of a singer and mm -hmm. it's really really interesting uh, I miss my coaches uh, I miss my my colleagues uh, uh, but I'm sure we'll we'll come back like fierce <laughs> stronger stronger than ever <laughs> And yeah, and I have time also to, of course, to enjoy my, my family time because, you know, as a singer, we travel a lot. My partner is also a musician, so he, travel, he travels a lot. Uh, we are young parents, so it's, it's not so often that we are the three of us at the same place and especially at home. We are at the same place, but not necessarily at home. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's really nice to have this time and to feel like a normal family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, in a way, you know, as in this industry, I feel like we're all, I mean, not all is great, obviously, but we're being like given the gift of time yeah. that yeah. everyone complains that we never have, yeah. you know? Yeah. So at least there's that. And so have you been able to work with your coaches online? No. I've been on the phone with her because we speak a lot. And I also met some videos with my friend and coach. Yeah. And list. Uh, but it was just for fun. I mean, we worked a bit on it, of course, but it was not like to prepare my roles. It was just to write some music. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, so, yeah, I... I but also, I, I have more time to work on my technique, uh, and uh, and also because of that, I've decided to to use this time and this uh, work <clears throat> to share more with uh, my community. So, because I I most of the time I I show what's happening behind the scenes right. on, my, on my social media, and and I work a lot with the straw, for example. So a lot of people ask about that. And yeah, I thought, okay, now I have time to answer all these questions. So let's do some videos. So this week I, I did a, a straw week so mm -hmm. people can, can see and, and ask questions and then we can really have the time to discuss about that. And I can, I can take time to answer questions and, and, and also to ask myself some questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. So other than the straw yeah. week, <laughs> I have also... Oh what is it? Goodness. Coffee. <laughs> I can't drink coffee. I'm I'm a black coffee New Yorker. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm more like ginger tisane. Tea, yeah, yeah. At night, definitely tisane. But during, here, here it's early. Yeah. It's still early. So, so are there other than the straw week? Are there any projects at home that? you've been doing that you don't normally do some special cooking or <laughs> fixing well, the house you know what the truth i clean my house <laughs> unbelievable yeah uh, well no i mean the normal things actually i don't really do because i move all the time so so i take care of my house i i i tie tied up my house i tidy up yeah i tidy up my house um and yeah, I cook. I cook. Yeah, I cook. And uh, but I anyway, I do that even if I'm not in quarantine. I cook. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and yeah, just spend time and and be able to do nothing or to you know, it's, it's so nice. It's so nice. I mean, of course, I say that it's so nice, and it doesn't make me forget that it's an awful situation for. Of course, of all course, of yeah. And also for the artist, it's it's super stressful. I mean, I'm a mm -hmm. positive person, so I, I, I try to think positively and about what the situation can 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 bring me. But it's really stressful because we don't know when we are going to work, and yeah. when we don't work, we don't earn money, and we still have to pay the rent. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's um, for all. Oh, actually, for all the people who work in freelance and for all the people in the um, uh, theater business, it's it's really it's really tough yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> so my oh, to for a more Sorry, I, see, I, see, I see some of my of my people here. Yes. So say hello. Thanks for joining. They Merci say. <laughs> So I have one more question and then yeah, we can sure. move on to, to everyone else's question. Uh, so what are you most looking forward to once the situation clears up? Um, I would say, I mean, it's, it's amazing how you can always do music. You can always sing and, and, and be happy to, to have this precious gift. But the thing I miss is is making music with people because it's mm -hmm. it's nothing for for people. But you know, with social media, I I feel like if I sing something and I post it, people are happy. So it's nice to have still this interaction and and this community. But uh, I miss being with my colleagues and my friends and 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 make music, make yeah. theater. 
yeah so yeah. being in the same room <laughs> yeah 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 and also of course my friends who are really important to me uh but i'm used to as many singers i'm used to to be alone so on the road so we're used to not see each other for a long time but mm -hmm. this feeling of not doing anything else <laughs> is a bit difficult yeah yeah in a way <clears throat> I think artists are very tough and we have in general thick skin. So, you know, I think we're yeah. going to be okay. Actually, I think, and I think there's a lot of creative, creative things happening yeah. and yeah. we will be okay. <laughs> yeah. And thanks to the art, because, because of that, thanks to that, we, we're not alone. And I feel it's our biggest strength. It's yeah. art, it's culture, it's, it's really, I, I really hope that the governments can realize that, that yeah. uh, of course we need the um, doctors and all that, of course, but can you imagine this quarantine without music and without books and without films? I mean, yes, yeah, totally, totally. We're, we're making <laughs> people's lives better for sure. Yeah. yeah. So let me look. We got a couple questions. Uh, so we have a lot of people tuning in from amazing places. Ah, where, where? Can I see them? Oh, or can can you see the comments? Or can, am I, I the see only the one? Comments. I don't know if we see the same comments or not. If we're sharing all the comments, or uh, I am. I am not sure. I think. I think you should. I think everyone sees everything. We okay. had some people from Mexico, Good. from Brazil, from Argentina. Hola, hola, hola. Uh, a ver, a ver. Marcelo M. Oreira, you're so inspiring to me as a singer and a vocal coach. Uh, Argus Argento, he's a countertenor. He says, I sing Mitridate di Scarlatti, and for oh, now, yeah. during quarantine, this is a good opportunity to feel my voice differently. Um, bum, bum. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Hello from Caracas, Venezuela. Hola. And so de Argus, Bonjour, Camille de Corse. Argus asks, um, Julie, do you feel your voice differently during quarantine? Well, I feel my voice different every day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you mean maybe because I'm, I'm not tired by traveling or by working. So maybe it's in this way you're asking. Um, I feel I have the tendency to not split my voice to my general, um, uh, feeling. I mean, if I, I also feel better in my body because I rest more, I, I sleep more, um, and I sleep better. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm more relaxed and also because I don't have to to rush to learn my next roles and and I don't have to organize many things as we have to do as singers like traveling, the nanny, mm -hmm. the rehearsals, mm -hmm. the coaches, the um so I feel I feel I'm more relaxed and I can feel that in the voice, of course. Mm -hmm. Right. And even because even if you're practicing and working every day, there's not that toll of all the performances on top of yeah. that, right? Yeah. yeah. But you know what? I never felt uh, performances tiring. Mm -hmm. That's technique. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, for me, the most tiring things are rehearsals, especially when they start mm -hmm. at 10 in the morning. Right, uh, right. And, and you know you have to be ready at 10. That means you have to warm up before and right. just um, quite early. And then you have another rehearsal in the, in the evening until 10 in the evening and that's the most tiring for me mm -hmm. and then you, are, you arrive at the at the premiere and you're like is it the premiere really like <laughs> I just want to go right to right but so then, in, for long rehearsals rehearsal days like that do you uh, how do you manage the singing do you mark do you or do you just sing the whole time uh, it depends on, on many things um if it's with the orchestra i I don't mark because it's we don't mm -hmm. see so much the orchestra, so I think that's a pity yeah. to lose an to work with them. 
and to uh, yeah to to work together so i mo i never mark except if i feel really like sick or or like really tired or something really bad i do, i don't i mark but normally with the orchestra i always sing full full voice and and then if it's like if it's clearly a rehearsal for the costumes or for you know, for the lights or for a colleague, for example, because he is mm -hmm. jumping in or, and, and, and you rehearse for him. So, yeah, I'm, I mark. <laughs> uh, mm. Because we have one month and a half uh, rehearsal most of the time with at least yeah, six hours a day. And if you sing all the time, I mean, it, there's no point to, to, to tire yourself. Mm -hmm. But when there is the orchestra or where... It depends also on the stage directors, for example, because mm -hmm. I know some who are really inspired by the good singing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, and I like to sing with the, uh, for them, like to make uh, even if the conductor is not here, I like to sing with them in rehearsal because I feel like they are more inspired. Yeah. So a question that a lot of young artists have. Um, is uh, how do you mark? What does marking oh. mean? And it can be different for different people. So that's why I think it's yeah. it's it's a good thing to to ask to see what marking yeah. means for you. I think it depends on your voice. Um, I'm a soprano, um, so I. It depends on what I need to work on, but I'm most of the time I just. Um, how do you mm -hmm. say that? So you sing it uh, an octave lower. For example, but it's nice sometimes for tricky parts to decide on which note you change. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's really tricky and you have to redo it again and it's tiring. Right. Uh, but the most important thing is like, if, even if you don't sing full voice, that your body is prepared. Because the, the um, uh, piège, uh, um, the trick, yeah, it, it is that you are low energy, you go low energy, and then it's tiring you more. So, right. right. Even if I mark, I do my yoga before a real soul. Okay. I, yeah. I don't think, oh, that's okay, I'm more. Oh. I mean, right, your, bo your body is still energized. It's yeah. just maybe you're saving a yeah. little bit yeah. of this. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. I still don't wake up early enough and I go oh, like that, but I'm to... <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Uh, cha -cha -cha -cha. Hey, the, back home. the back home, they are my friend from, oh. from... Um, your uh, English. Someone says your English is wonderful, Julie. <laughs> Thank you. Ginger tea, people here saying they like ginger tea also. <laughs> oh, so Kira Jackson, with, who is uh, in, um, commenting a lot, thank you. Uh, marking is good or not? I mean, if you can sing, please sing. It's always better to sing. <laughs> yeah. But if you're tired, don't sing and mark, that's all. But do a good marking. And you can work on, on how you mark with your teacher, with your, with your coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Camille Bro says hi from Montre Montreal. Bonjour. Bonjour Camille. Uh, so someone here says I already miss going to the opera so much. <laughs> we do too. We do too. But there's a there's a lot a lot of great stuff happening happening online to keep us yeah interested. And that's something I wanted to ask if there's um, if you can share with us if there's special operas out there that you've been in that are uh available for live stream or your yeah. cds that people can listen to yeah i mean i try to to give information on also on my account and on my um opera is open account because i've created mm -hmm. this uh to to show that op opera is open and for many reasons you can buy tickets you can buy I, um, for for cheaper than you think, you can you can have some free entrance for a visit for a tour, and things like that. So yeah, um, I know that Opera de Paris is doing it, and also uh, the Met and Wiener Staatsoper, um, also the um, Berlin uh, Philharmonie, they do also uh, some streaming. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else? I mean, I I guess that now 
most of the the opera house do that. Yeah. And also theater, like the Comédie Française, for example, it's not about opera, but still it's, it's, it's interesting for us. Uh, they, they're doing that too, so, yeah. Right, I think it's also a good time to discover a little bit, not just opera, but all the other yeah, sister sure. arts, like theater and yeah. maybe more orchestral music and all the things that we never have time to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And even not music, I mean, even not art, you can yeah. just discover the pleasure of walking in the nature, for example. <laughs> because yes. we don't do often, I mean, some some of us do already, but, you know, it's now that we are inside all the time, we discover that, oh, it's nice to walk in the countryside. <laughs> right. Yes, yes. Let's yeah. see. We have Rome, Morocco, uh, Jesse, Mira, salut les filles, coucou Julie. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I think I would turn, turn on the light. Okay. I don't know if it's better or not, but let's see. Someone asked, uh, this is my dad who's asking. <laughs> Julie, you're great. You also sing in Spanish. Is that so? Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's I in see. Argentina. <laughs> uh, you, you're from Argentina? Mm -hmm. uh, where? From where exactly? Buenos Aires. Uh, yeah. Me encanta. <laughs> uh, um, I sing Spanish for my son also because my partner is Spanish. So I mm -hmm. sing lullabies in Spanish, <laughs> mostly. But um, I'd like to sing uh, Zarzuelas more. Yes. I, I sang one in my last recording, uh, Mademoiselle, because it was about um, orphans who mm -hmm. fight. And we found one of these characters in, uh, in a Spanish Zarzuela. Uh, so from Barbieri. Barbieri. Uh -huh. So I sang Spanish in one of my um, aria in my last city. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. There is a lot of great sarsuela repertoire. It's it's very fun. Yeah. Um, and also also in the Baroque music, we have a lot of uh, Baroque yeah. music. Yeah. Yes. Let's see. Ah. Uh, Julie, j'aime beaucoup votre voix. <laughs> Merci. Um, have you ever sung with a countertenor? If yes, how was it? Uh, or if you haven't, with which counter tenor would you like to sing? What is a counter tenor? I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, I sang a lot with counter tenors because I, I sang uh, baroque music. Mm -hmm. So uh, in concerts, I sang a lot. In, uh, in Algina, I sang with Filip Jarosky, for example, who was singing Ruggiero. Uh, in L'Incoronazione di Popea, I've worked with David Hansen. Mm. Uh, I love singing with, with, with this type of voice because it seems for me really like we are so close in the harmonics. Mm -hmm. it's, so, it's so close from, uh, uh, from our voice as sopranos, some high, high voice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and there is such a big... A range of countertenors, like yeah. different type of voices. It's really interesting, especially now, I think so. You can have so many different style of countertenors, so um, I can't wait. Next next season in Mitridate, I will sing with uh, Jakub. Also, so I really... Uh, oh, cool! I'm, I'm really looking forward to it because he's a, he's a beautiful artist and, and, and really a nice, nice, nice guy, nice person, so yeah. Fun, fun, awesome. So we have uh, Camille, who's in Montréal, asked, uh, à propos de yoga, as-tu une bonne méthode de yoga à conseiller, spécialement avant de chanter? So in English, um, Camille is asking, uh, talking about yoga, do you have a specific style of yoga uh, you can recommend, especially before singing? Um... Well, the yoga I practice is a practice is uh, like a mixture because every time I work with a with a teacher, yoga teacher, I try to 
I tell her or him that I'm an opera singer and what my needs are. So I really try to get uh, things that are helpful for me. For example, the uh, how to really open the, the ribs and the, all the thoracic cage. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, for example. So, but I think that everything in the yoga is good for, for, for us. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I like the, for example, the fish. Uh huh. When yes. you do that, well, don't make yeah. me show you now. <laughs> <laughs> you can um, you can Google I, fish pose yoga <laughs> yeah. and see a picture. Uh, but and any any anything with the breathing is good anyway. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's see more questions. I see uh, so Luciano from Buenos Aires, Argentina, what is your passion besides singing? Do you have uh, any likes or hobbies? I, ha I have a lot. I mean, it's, <laughs> of course, the strongest is, is uh, singing because it takes most of my time. Uh, but I love theater. I've started with theater. Um, so I, I love to go to the theater too. Um, I I love to cook. <laughs> I cook a lot, <laughs> and and actually I'm I'm really interested in uh, like everything who who makes you uh, a better person. So um, I like to read about sometimes spirituality or you know things you can. Mm, nourish, nourish mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. no, yeah, nurture your or nourish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nurture, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are what are some specialties of yours that you cook? I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's changing all the time. For example, for the first time last week, I did a, a cake, a lemon cake, and it was the first time. And it was quite a success, so I think I will do it again. But otherwise, I'm, I'm really, my thing is like les crêpes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, uh, and well, I don't know, I, I, cakes. I like to cook cakes. Mm -hmm. mm. I like the chemistry, you know, like wow, eggs, sugar. And and uh, flour, cake, <laughs> magical. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love. That. Oh, that's so good. I want a French cake right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. I have a question from uh, Soap Kila Jackson. Can I read? Uh -huh. it? Yes, please. Love question. Uh, Julie, I need an advice. I love how you sing melodies perfectly. Thank you. I really love melodies, but I found singing them is harder than singing opera arias. I really do not know what to do. Um, well, I don't, I, I don't know you, so I can't give you a specific advice, but sometimes people think that they have to sing less when they sing mm -hmm. melodies. I, mm -hmm. I used to, to, to think like that when I was a student. Like, oh, it's easy melodies. I don't, I don't need to, to work so much on it. And uh, of course that's wrong because what any, any matter what you sing, you have to sing with your, with your body and with, you, with your voice. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe the first thing I would say is to, to work on the melody the same way you would work on, on an aria. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe the problem is because also of the text it depends on, on your way of making music. But for example, for me, um, uh, I was um, trapped uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the words uh, because mm -hmm. I, want, I, I, I wanted to pronounce too much, like to make mm -hmm. people understand what I was <laughs> saying because it's so important. Yeah. I was not putting the right... Um, it was not balanced, you know. The thing is, when the voice is at the right place, you don't have to make efforts for the text. Mm -hmm. Of course, 
the text has to be understand, but it will happen naturally if the voice is at the right place. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't uh, uh, put too much effort yeah. uh, on this yeah. part because it's not the good way to work on it. It's the good way um, if you to think that people should understand. Of course, yes, but it's not the good way to work on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then les crêpes, yam yam. So someone asks, uh, "Hi Julie, can you help me understand what is the mascara and how to use it?" It's, I mean, <laughs> it's it's my the difficulty on Instagram because I'm first I'm not a teacher. I would like to teach at some point, but it's not my job. And I think that to teach is a proper job. I mean, you just need to to know not only about the technique but you need to know how to to share uh, the advices because it depends on who you have in front of you you can't say the same thing to uh, a young singers to who has who has no experience you can't say the same the same thing so it's really hard to answer this question um the thing you should mm -hmm. i think um think about in this mascara thing is uh, it's, it's all about resonance and harmonics. So the mascara is a good um, image to not put pressure on this part of, of your body because it's, it's not where you want uh, to put the sound. So it's just, here is just uh, um, uh, a passage. It's just, um, mm -hmm. How do you say that? Like a, like a path of the yeah. way it goes yeah. through. Yeah. But you shouldn't put pressure. And and the mask helps helps you to think about this this zone to put your your mm -hmm. sparkles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I think those are all the questions for now. Uh, I wanted to ask if there are any movies or shows that you've been watching that you would recommend aside from opera actually i'm i mean my uh, f i'm i just finished a book yesterday a french book uh i was not so happy about it because it was too uh moving and i don't like that i wanted to cry all the time so i wouldn't recommend <laughs> it for now um <laughs> and um I've I've watched a documentary last week about the the quartet Artemis on Arte. Uh -huh. I think uh -huh. um, it was nice to see this uh, this uh, quartet who they lost one of their member to kill himself, and mm -hmm. they they were um, talking about how they could be a quartet again after that and and how to make music and, and the chemistry be, be, between four people. So it was really, really nice to see that. Actually, documentaries are now my, my favorites. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I love melodies, but my teacher says many of them are too low for me. Do you have repertoire suggestions for a high soprano? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's the thing for sopranos. It's, if you are a high soprano, uh, melodies are not in your no, range. But the thing is also melody are not about the range. It's you, you normally you don't want to sing melodies to, to sing high notes or to sing low notes even. I mean, you just want to sing melodies because it's, it's beautiful music. It's, uh, it's um, a really interesting mix between the words and the poesy and, and, the, and the music. And, it's not all about the high notes, <laughs> but right. if you want to explore that, you have from Debussy all the, the melodies he wrote for Blanche Vanier, who mm -hmm. who was, uh, we think that they, they were in love, but nothing was really confirmed. Um, <laughs> and she was a student when he was uh, a companionist. And uh, so he wrote a lot of melodies for her voice uh high voice and so you can find it's most of the time melody de jeunesse i, I record some of them in my first mm -hmm. album uh, and uh, i know that there, there are a lot for for this kind of, of soprano uh, and also in french music there are a lot because uh, you know we have this type of 
a voice <laughs> in France. Yeah. So, um, you have Le Roussel, for example, I think so. Um, well, yeah. I, I think about it and maybe I will answer later if you write me. <laughs> here, here someone asks if you've sung uh, Fauré or Poulenc. If I sang Fauré or Poulenc, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah? Yes, yes. I love to sing both. Uh, I sang a lot Poulenc melodies, especially the Louise de Villemorin, because I really love how she, she writes. And I think it's nice to sing uh, female words. <laughs> Mm. So, yeah, I really love this music. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we should start yeah. to wrap up. I had one. Oh, I know, we could stay here all day. Uh, I have one more question. Um, is there a country or an opera house you haven't been to yet and you would like to go to at some point? Ah. Uh, you, if you if you would have asked me this question a few years ago, I would know the answer. But I have to say that now I realize more and more that what makes me happy and artistically fulfilled is um, the project and the teamwork and how a conductor and or a stage director make me visit a role mm -hmm. and this you can find it in many places I mean of course to sing at the Met to sing at the uh, Scala to sing at the Wiener Staatsoper it sounds great but it doesn't mean anything on the paper so mm -hmm. if I could have beautiful experience there I would be so happy so happy also because I really love New York <laughs> but it has to be, <laughs> it has to be to come with something exciting. Otherwise, it's nice for the curriculum vitae, but I, I don't really see the point. Right, right. So it's more about the experience and the people and the project. Yes, yeah. but that's mm -hmm. true that most of the time, and it's not all the time true, but most of the time you can find a good team, a good project in big houses because you think they have the money, they have... Uh, the tools to work on that but not necessarily sometimes it's not in the big houses that you find the the most interesting thing some sometimes yes so yeah <laughs> yeah well i want to thank you so much for coming and talking to us thank and you for answering our questions to everyone following 360 of opera is there anything else you want to say where people can find you well yeah you can find me on my on my account julie fuchs soprano uh, and i was happy to share this moment with you uh it's really as an artist it's really, it's really nice to feel like our audience is still here, even if we are not in the theaters, and that a lot of people and young people and and older people, but I mean people, <laughs> yeah. that you are here for us and, and for sharing this wonderful art form. It's nice. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful. Well, have a great evening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> have a great day. Have a great evening and thank you so much. And I'm gonna be sharing this on the story for the next 24 okay, hours so people good. can watch it. Good. Bye bye. Bye. Take care. Everyone. Take care. Ciao. Bye -bye.